Before the um, march begins, I'd like to explain the order of the march. Each group of honor students will march in informal procession this evening, and I will announce each boy's name as he enters the sanctuary. The first group that you will see marching in represents those students in the ninth grade who have maintained a 90 or better average for one year, have qualified for the principal's yearly honor roll, and who will be led in procession by Dr. Yitzhak Goldberg, the Associate Principal of YDE. The second group to march in represents the Junior Division Honor Society members who have maintained a 90 or better average for two years and will be led by Rabbi Avi Ben Shishan, Director of Student Achievement at YDE High School. And the final and third group to march in represents those Senior Division Honor Society members who have maintained a 90 or better average for three years and will be led in procession by Rabbi Jonathan Luskak, Assistant Principal of YDE. At this time, I would like you to join me in welcome, welcoming the Principal's Honor Roll students led by Dr. Ginsburg Ober, Associate Principal of YDE. Bobby Higgins, Ariel Dinaminov, Joseph Greenstein, Joseph Hirsch, Julian Israel, Morris Kobina, Jimmy Marlow, Zoha Lebar, Morris Kizrahi, Joseph Mizrahi, Ezra Naftali, Raphael Sada, David Safdie, and Isaac Shannon. I would now call upon the Junior Division of the Rocky Honor Society members led by Rabbi, Rabbi Avi Ben Shushan, Director of Student Achievement at YD High School. <laughs> Jimmy Addis, Ralph Amash, <laughs> Joey Bossi, <laughs> Ellie Benatar, Moshe Shire, Jim Cronin, 
Já jsem kávěl. Lenin Dušej. Jakob Elias. Lani Flahan. Morris Kinti. Akhime Dragobov. Sol Zawada. Jack Lati. Max Masterton. Ivy Mizrahi. Charlie Rooney. Abe Sadia. Victor Sada. Jacob Sorcher. Joseph Swain. Eddie Carroll. Eliyahu Hasdi. Raymond Zakaria. And there is a two. I will now call upon the procession of the YTE Senior Division Honor Society members led by Rabbi Jonathan Muscat, Assistant Principal of YTE High School. <laughs> Joseph Abraham. <laughs> David Hamon. <laughs> David Basul. Andrew Bacar, Ariel Benzua, Isaac Beda, Gabriel Bonalucci, Martin Cohen, Moshe Plana, Alan Franco, Albert J. Kingsley, Abraham Hassan, Jacob Hayfest, Daniel Hirsch, Isaac Abia, Lizzie Kaffee, Morris Lati, Joseph Nassau, Jacob Seda, Sammy Sassoon, Morris Gack, Abby Tao and Albert Tatumi.
Kabbalah is essential to our development as healthy, confident people. During these days of the Omen, we know that the students of Rabia Kibbalah died because they did not give each other enough Kabbalah. We, as teenage high school boys, are working on the Kabbalah between us and our friends, or us between older people, or someone older than us. But there is another aspect of Kabbalah that is overlooked by many. This is giving Kabbalah even to someone who is beneath our level and doesn't deserve it. Sometimes, a person is given an opportunity to give Kabbalah and dignity to people that we wouldn't normally have the opportunities to do so. We have to seize those opportunities and do whatever we can to preserve someone else's dignity. I heard a story that brings this point out quite beautifully. One Shabbat morning, during Shahi, as the new Hakam goes up to the Kanaliya, the crowd and the family start throwing candy and lepas at him. One wise guy in the crowd winds up with the lepas in his hand, aiming to the direction of the Hakam. Unfortunately, this child didn't have the best aim. The candy whizzed right past the Hakam and hit the rabbi in the face. The rabbi, the shoes stopped. The shoe was frozen. The rabbi looked up. And the kid just stood there and changed. It's terrifying. After Musa, the kid ran over to the rabbi in front. He said, Rabbi, please forgive me. I didn't do it on purpose. I tried to have time. I feel terrible, Rabbi. The rabbi asked, You were the one that did it? And the kid said, Yeah. So the rabbi says, Thank you for coming over to me. I feel very grateful. And the kid said, Why? So he, the rabbi said, Let me tell you the truth. I'm exhausted. I've been sleeping and dozing off during praying. I needed a real good wake up call. When that left is hitting the face, believe me, I couldn't go to sleep afterwards. The child was smiling and felt like a million dollars. Sometimes people do something wrong, and maybe they are in need of being rebuked. But there's a way to do it. Even though it may have been more appropriate for the rabbi to rebuke this child, the rabbi spoke to him with kind words. He showed him respect. We learn from here that we must even show Kabod to someone who may not deserve it. Kabod is always required. I want to mention another aspect of Kabod that is often overlooked. That is the idea of respecting our heritage and our status of being the children of Hashem. We are aware of the assimilation, that raid that is happening right now. Assimilation occurs when someone doesn't have pride in the status as a Jew and doesn't feel the dignity of being a Ben Mela. My uncle told me a fascinating thing, that although the country of Venezuela is naturally rich with oil, gold, and diamonds, and a very fertile ground, really, it should be a wealthy, self-sustainable country. But in fact, it's a very poor and undeveloped country. Another fascinating but tragic fact of Venezuela is that it used to be a thriving, very large population has now dwindled to a few thousand Jews. The rest, many of them have been lost to assimilation. Who knows if this lack of kabod and pride of being this Jewish nation isn't somehow connected to the poverty of this natural wealthy country. Bezat Hashem, during these days of the Sakrat of Ahmed, it is essential to preserve each person's dignity and to go out of our way to find ways to enhance the kabod of others. And no matter where we stand on our social level, Ladder, to make sure that the others, whether above, equal or below us, feel special and appreciated. And to always remember how special it is to be a Jew and to feel a sense of pride and dignity in being Hashem's chosen people. Have a great night. Distinguished guests, rabbis, faculty, their parents, and friends, as representative of the YDE administration, faculty and inductees, I'm happy to welcome you to the YDE Honor Society and Principal's Honor Roll Induction Ceremony. I know that both students and parents appreciate the time and willingness of the faculty after a very long day to remain here this evening in order to acknowledge the achievement of your sons at this special ceremony. At this time, I would like to acknowledge the faculty members who are here tonight in order to honor your sons and the special awardees. If I could ask the faculty who are here on both sides to please stand, just for a second, I know that it's a little hard, please stand, please stand, the faculty, just for one minute. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Thank you. Your presence here is greatly appreciated by all of the parents and students and the administration. The honors program induction is the culmination of one, two, or three years of effort maintaining an average of 90 or better. The YDE Honor Society is an association of teachers and students organized to encourage and reward outstanding achievement in eight major areas. Character, courage, honesty, humility, leadership, scholarship, and service. That are the requirements for entry into this honor society. The honors program attempts to foster the mobility of character to create and maintain spirit of true loyalty and unselfish service and leadership to one school and to the larger community. It is hard to believe that our school was only a whisper in the wind six short years ago. And a very dedicated group of parents, some of whom are sitting here tonight, took the initiative in order to help create this institution of learning. Each organization also needs infrastructure and finances. And I would be remiss not to mention Ms. Edward Sapp, who is the executive director of the YDE business community. And it's his unlucky task to make sure that the finances of the school are always on the positive side. And he works 24-7 to ensure the success of the school. Every great institution reflects the guiding light of a unique or special individual who through their vision, perseverance, love and guidance is able to instill the noble qualities that YD has come to represent and was also able to spread that special light of Torah and secular knowledge to those students who learn and grow into exceptional young adults here at YD. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to call upon our guiding light, Rabbi Meir Yadid, Rosh Yeshiva of YD, to say a few words to you. Rabbi Yadid. Thank you, Mr. Zalman. Thank you, Mr. Zalman. Thank you all for coming tonight. Parents, grandparents, friends, students, faculty. Morris spoke so beautifully. And I thought he was going to take my, uh, my speech. Baruch Hashem, you took a different direction. <laughs> we call tonight the Honor Society. The induction to the honor society. This is actually a very important evening. Much more than we think. We know that honor, kavod, as Morris mentioned, is something that generally we are asked to stay away from. Like our rabbis tell us, those who run after honor, honor runs away from them. So if so, what are we doing honoring you tonight? We want you to continue to be mechubad. We don't want honor to run away from you. So why would we put you in a position that you're looking for honor? But in truth, honor is as vital to the human as air. A human cannot live without honor. We all need to feel honor. So how does that work? If honor is vital, and we need it to survive, and we can't live a moment without it, then how is it that in other places, honor is discouraged? Our rabbis say, no, run away from honor. Rather, honor takes you out of this world. And the answer to this question is that it all depends where your honor comes from. If a person's honor comes from his own accomplishments, from the satisfaction of what he has done for himself and for others, through wisdom, through kindness, through social good that he's doing with others, through honoring his parents, through giving the community. If that's where your kavod is coming from, from within yourself, that's a beautiful honor. 
That's something you walk around and you feel great about. When you help somebody, you feel good. You feel honor. The word kavod in Hebrew comes from the word kaved. Kaved means heavy. Heavy not in physical way. Heavy in accomplishment. If a person is empty of honor, meaning he is empty of accomplishment, he's not doing enough for himself, he's not learning enough, he's not giving enough, he's not growing enough, then he feels empty. He doesn't feel kavod, respect for himself. And when you're void of kavod, you can't live. And when you can't live because you don't have your own dinner, God forbid, if a person can't afford dinner, what does he need to do? He needs to take his hand and do something he doesn't want to do, but he has no choice. He's going to have to knock on the next door neighbor and say, please, could you afford some bread? Can you give me something to eat tonight? I don't have food. The same goes with a person who doesn't feel honor because he doesn't have enough accomplishments. He feels empty. And when you feel empty of honor, you know what you have to do? You have to go search to other people to say, please, please, Joe, could you give me honor? Please, Morris, give me kavod. Tell me that I'm good. Tell me that I belong. Tell me that I'm worth it. That kind of kavod is something to run away from. Because that kavod is an illusion. It makes you feel that you're heavy in accomplishments. But you're really empty. It's like a high that a person goes on, but right away goes right back down. That's why tonight is very important. Because tonight we're not only honoring you, but we're honoring honor itself. We're honoring what real honor represents. You're here tonight not because someone gave you something. You're here tonight because you earned something, because you accomplished something. And therefore we say, you are mechubad. You are the one who deserves, deserves honor. Not the person in the street that's looking for handouts from other people. Not the one trying to show himself that he's good. Rather, someone who's actually being good. So tonight is a very special night. It's a night to be remembered, not for the honor per se, but for the source of tonight's honor. And you know how? You know how you know if a person has honor? If you ever want to test yourself, if you ever want to gauge, am I a person who's accomplishing in life? Do I have honor, real honor or fake honor? Which category am I? Am I the handout guy? Or am I the guy who's kaved, who's heavy? You know what our rabbis say? They say, go into a room. You don't know anybody in the room. Baruch Hashem, in this room I can't say that. I know most of you. But imagine you went into a room and you knew nobody. And somebody asked you, who in this room is mechubad, is honorable? And you say, I don't know. You know what rabbis tell us? Find the person that's giving honor to others. The one who's patting his friend on the back. The one who's opening the door for a stranger. The one who's smiling at a person walking across from him. The one that's giving kabod by saying nice words to others. If you see a person that's giving out honor, that's dishing it out to others, then he's the guy who has honor. Seemingly the question wasn't answered. Our, our rabbis didn't ask who gives honor. Our rabbis ask, who has honor? Who deserves honor? How does the answer answer the question? Because he gives honor, that means he has honor. And the truth is, it's no different than money. 
If I would walk into this room and somebody would say, hey, who's wealthy in this room? Who has a lot of money? I don't know, I don't know. And you see there's a guy in the corner. He's got a nice checkbook. And every guy, there's lines of people waiting. And every guy that comes, he says, what's your name? Oh, Moshe. Okay, Moshe, Moshe Tawil. I'm gonna give you a million dollars. Next. What do you need? Two million, two million. Each guy online is getting millions of dollars. So you say, oh, that guy, he's very wealthy. And somebody would ask me, how do you know? Did you see his bank account? No. Did you see his office? No. Say, so how do you know he's wealthy? Because if a person is giving money to others, that means he's wealthy. When a person gives honor to other people, what does that show? That he has a lot of honor for himself. Because when I have my own honor, I don't mind to give it to others. I'm not afraid to put others in front of me because I have my own respect. But if I'm lacking honor, I'm afraid to put others ahead of me. That scares me. It takes away my respect. Tonight is a very special night. And we're all here to celebrate true honor, which you all deserve. And we hope that you will continue to feel that satisfaction of accomplishment, not only in your studies, but in all facets of your life. Whether it's at home with your parents, whether it's Be'ezat Hashem in the future, in your own homes, with your own children, in your businesses, in your studies, in whatever you set out to accomplish, you should always feel real honor from real accomplishments. I have the honor tonight not only to speak to you, which I just did, but I also have the honor of introducing someone who we invited to speak tonight, someone who's a friend of the yeshiva, someone who cares very much for the community. We are running a program this week in the yeshiva. The program is on the theme of how we have to love others and do for others. I can tell you that Haim Chira is a person who cares for the community, who worries about the future of the community, who wants to help the community in any way that he can. Hashem has blessed him with the ability to help in many ways. And we are fortunate to have him here tonight. Just, to, and just before I ask him to say a few words, there was a great, great rabbi in Yerushalayim. His name was Rav Pesach Sweet Frank. And at that time, the chief rabbi of Jerusalem had passed away. And they were left without their guiding light, without a rabbi. And they were thinking who they should get. And all opinions agreed that the one they needed to go and ask to appoint to be the chief rabbi of Jerusalem would be our face our sweet friend. So they made a delegation, they gathered, and they went to visit the rabbi. And they're sitting with the rabbi, and they're telling the rabbi, you know, the chief rabbi passed away. He said, yeah, I know. He said, you know, we don't have anybody right now. He says, yeah, I know. He said, you know, we do need a chief rabbi. He said, yeah, I know. He said, you know, it's very hard to find somebody. He said, I know. He said, they're asking five, six questions, and everything he knows. So the rabbi says, I don't understand. Everything you told me, I know. What are you here for? What do you want from me? They told him, we need someone to be the chief rabbi who doesn't know why we're here. That's exactly who we want. We want someone who doesn't know why we're here. That's how we came. We need you. When we ask Mr. Chiva to come speak, he says, I'm not a speaker. He says, who am I to come and speak? So we told him, that's exactly who we want to speak to. Someone who doesn't want to speak. So with that, I'd like to introduce Mr. Jira. I am pleased. Okay. Indeed, I'm, I am humbled to be here, and I have no idea why I was asked to speak. Um, but I will speak from my heart, and will speak to uh, the, the young men sitting in front of me, to the parents that are honored to be here and their parents. Um, and it's a great pleasure and my honor to be here to share with you 
in recognition of your great success and achievements. Uh, the subject that I was asked to speak about is how to be successful in life. And if there's a definition of how I would like to be successful in life or known to be successful, it would be to be a great member of Am Israel, our great community, uh, a good son, a great father, and a good friend to anybody who needs a friend. Honor roll inductees are indeed a group to be proud of. The effort and energy that is invested in this achievement is surely a great moment to pause, take stock, and to be proud. At this moment, you can reflect on your success, as the honor roll has defined that moment for you, and you have clearly worked hard to be here. Yet, at this moment, as this moment defines a portion of the sum of your past achievements, it also opens up the path to define your future and in the time ahead of you. What is it that you do with this gift of achievement? What is it that you do with this ability you have to rise above the crowd as you all have? To harness knowledge and guide hard work as you all have. So if you ask yourself, what is success? You'll find out a lot about yourself. You need to define what success is for you, and you will learn a lot about yourself in doing so. The way that I define success for myself when I, when I was in high school is very different than how I see it today. I have learned a lot. And I hope the reason I was asked to speak to you tonight is to share some thoughts and experiences that have helped shape outcomes that could be helpful to you all in the future. It's interesting to me that your school motto contains words that I have been told and taught many times when I was in high school, but I'm not sure I really believed that they weren't just mottos and not keys to a great, satisfying, successful, meaningful life. Character, courage, honesty, humility, leadership, responsibility, and scholarship. And the question is, are they powerful words that you just hear and are taught, or do you live with them as young adults as you're about to be for the graduates and, and the younger grades as they get older? Or do you even remember the actions that they represent? Do those words match your actions when you graduate and move into the real world? Will you live and act in contradiction to the teachings of your great rabbis and teachers? Or will you apply them and fulfill our purpose in life to improve our midot every day that we are gifted with life in this world? So my story and how I learned a lot about life actually came through some adversity. And uh, I'm a graduate of Yeshiva of Flatbush. I had great teachings. I learned incredible amounts of Lumidei Kodesh, Torah, Gemara. And the question was, where was that going to come with me? I was extremely blessed. Graduating Flatbush, I was raised by the best mom and dad. My mom is the most kind and caring person. My dad is wise, brilliant, and someone I look up to and learn from every day. And I grew up extremely privileged. If I wanted it, I had it. I have two brothers, great siblings. I love our community and always dreamed of being a leader and a giver to our community organizations. All of the blessings that I just mentioned to you, if you can believe it, can be a recipe for disaster. And what's the disaster that could come from all of those blessings? So some of it's called life, some of it's called entitlement, and God forbid, some of it's called arrogance. Imagine a picture-perfect life of love, spirituality, blessings, and privilege, and then adversity comes. So I talk to the older students and ask you to look ahead in life and say, what kind of character are you going to take into your life? Because life isn't a straight line. It's not just like this. It's not perfect. It comes adversity. And the one thing you'll fall back on is your character. We'll get back to that in a moment. When adversity comes, you'll ask yourself a question. Where did this come from? My life was great. Challenges came, and you are going to ask yourself, how do I deal with them? And how do I get back to where I was? 
And my answer to you is a lot of sincere praying to Hashem and your character. That's the one thing you'll be able to fall back on. It's number one on your school model list, and it's number one on my most valuable life list. Invest in your character. And that's a word, and we need to delve into what that actually means. It's not something you inherit, it's something you earn. And in, in, in this community, uh, you're born with a great head start in the world. We have a beautiful community, and it does amazing things for its own people. But it clings to the people that have the best character, that have the most humility, that have what the rabbi said, where they don't chase honor, where honor chases them because they're not looking for it. And that's part of building your character. My story of adversity is that when I graduated uh, high school and started college, um, my family business, which was the, the, the source of my privilege, of course with blessing from Hashem, um, had very difficult times and hard times. And incredibly, our community stepped up to the plate and saved my family from a disaster. And it was only through that experience that I saw what mattered in this community. And I call it a brand. I call it your brand. So some people are born to famous families in this community. Some people are born to resources and privilege. Um, but I'd love to tell you that the most important thing that you have is your name and how it's defined by your character. We have uh, Shem Tov, Mishem and Tov. But really, to live that and to understand what that means and how to earn that is really probably a great uh, lesson in life that you could uh, take with you and carry with you because it is your most valuable currency. And I mentioned the word brand, and we'll call it Shem Tov for, for, for now. Um, but how you build Shem Tov comes from who you are, not exactly who your parents are. That gives you a head start. But no matter what you start with, your name and what you do with your character and your behavior, and this could be how you behave sitting in shul and the person next to you sees you and knows your name, and believe it or not, people are watching you and they know your name. You stop building your brand from that. It could be when you're working out in the gym, how you treat the person when you check in the clerk, or the person cleaning up the gym, you drop your towel and say someone's gonna get it for me, or do you, do you actually complete their affairs? Um, everyone has their own brand. Your brand is your name. And how you behave from the days you're in high school to a young adult all create that brand equity in who you are. And to talk about being successful in life, successful in business is what a lot of people care about. Successful in life, I told you, being a good son, a good member of our community is most important to me. But a lot of people have on their mind, how do I be successful? And I can tell you when the difficult times came in our business, it was only because of good behavior or sincerity or honesty or little things that I think were recognized prior that saved us. For no reason other than the fact that the community was great and the community clung to people that they felt were honest and that would do the right thing no matter what happened. So I urge you, as young as you are, to start thinking about your future. You have a first name and a last name. That first name and last name creates a brand about who you are. And whatever you need from our community in the future in life, um, they will be there for you if you're a good brand name, if you have a, a Shem Tov. And that Shem Tov is, goes back to their heads, the basic, basic things that you were taught in your life, in your, in, your, in your home, by your parents, and in your school, and all the words that make up your school motto, look at them because they are a roadmap for building a brand of who you are. Each one of your names will become a brand to itself, and each one of you have the chance to shape what that brand represents. And it could be on a basketball court, how you conduct yourself, do you have a temper, do you act humbly when you lose. All of those things, they believe there's a video camera because there practically is today with everyone having a phone and, 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 and recording things. They believe that your life is being recorded and you're building your brand today 
as if that will matter every day of your life. And in adversity, you'll find out about how important that is, and nobody should have adversity, you should have great blessed lives. But when that comes, you know who's there to help you, you know who's there to pray for you, to bless you, and you want all of that. And the way that follows you is by conducting yourself in a way that creates equity in your brand, in who you are. Your, your actions represent that brand. They also represent the name of our community, the name of Am Yisrael, and most important, Kiddush Hashem. Every day, you'll have a thousand opportunities to choose a path. Do I honor myself, my family, my community, my people, and Hashem? Character is how you treat somebody you need nothing from. In business, people love to say, oh, I got to this person, I got to that person. When you need something from somebody, how you treat them doesn't define your character. It's how you treat people you don't need something from. The way you smile at somebody, a stranger. Hold the door for somebody when, somebody, when nobody's looking. How you speak to the person selling you a newspaper or a coffee, or even the taxi driver. You treat him like a human being. Is he less than you, the same as you? How do you talk to them? I was just blessed to have my daughter engaged to be married. And I told her when she was a little girl, Cookie, marry the guy who's nicest to the waiter on the date. And she came to me years later, and she said, Daddy, I found the guy who's nicest to the waiter, and I'm going to marry him. <laughs> so to me, she listened from very young. And it was very special that that meant something to her. So I can give you the same advice. Boys, be nice to the waiter always in front of days. If you go into business, what do you do when someone overpays an invoice or pays their rent twice? Do you keep your word? Is your word good? All those decisions that you'll have to face tie back to all those we got and all those words of, of morals and ethics that you're being taught. Apply them. They're not just words. They're real things to live by. And they will define who you are. And the more you define who you are by them, the more you'll build equity in the brand of who you are and your first name and your last name. It becomes you. If you wear coupon CC, you have an extra burden because everybody will be looking at you and looking at your behavior and saying, aha, look how they behave. You all will have an extra layer of burden as Jews, as a member of our community, wearing coupon, wearing whatever you wear that says who you are, Remember that always. People look at you, how you behave on the bus. You block somebody's driveway when you're parking. All of those things are very important for you to take forward. And you look back at all your model words. They're there. They're not disconnected from what you do. They are right there. Just learn that they mean something in everyday life and they're not just words. All of this may sound very spiritual, Zionistic, patriotic. It's all of the above. But if you build equity in your brand, with what who and what it represents, then something amazing happens. Success actually follows you. The rabbis talk about honoring, honor chasing you. Success and honor will chase you. You don't need to chase it. Most people graduate from high school and they get advice in business about networking to be successful. My idea for all of you is to reverse network. Have people want to be with you. You do that by investing in your character and in your behavior. Why not be the prize instead of chasing the prize? People of all organizations look for young people who are special in their character before they look for people with skills. One of the many things that we pray for, and these are just little other pieces of advice that I can have for you. One of the many things that we pray for that is greatly overlooked is to pray for fame. And when we ask Hashem to have other people look on us favorably and have Hashem bless us with that magnetic force that makes people like us, there's a contribution that you can make to that effort where Hashem's blessings to you can be aided and efforted by your behavior and your character. That's a burden that you carry. That's your part of praying praying for them. And before I walk into a meeting, actually before I walk into here, nervous as I am, um, I pray for all of you to look favorably on me. And for the things that I've done in my life, hopefully to uh, bring me here with humility and still not understand why I'm here, but to just share with you what I look for and, and what I hope for, to have people look 
them and acknowledge them in every moment, <coughs> even in adversity. Hashem is there with you also. I didn't only live through adversity in business and financial. I lived through a personal health uh, adver uh, time of adversity in my life. And I can tell you, it all comes together. All of you need dogs, people praying to you. It all comes from, hopefully, what you will do in your life to earn people's good wishes. So start now. Build up that bank that you have of goodwill from other people, because people's prayers for you do help. And we live in an amazing community where we can count on each other. We live in a community that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. And I tell this to you because I am the most thankful for the community's help in times of financial adversity, my personal health adversity, the prayers worked, and I know that they came from love and sincerity, and you should work from now as young men to do everything that you can so that you build up that bank of goodwill. Because one day, if you need it, there is no community and, and, and no nation like we have in this, in this very, very blessed community that we have. So I, I, I am thankful and grateful, but I urge you to recognize how good it is that we have it. And, and, and I'm humbled by it. On a business note, the best advice I can give you in business is Sedaka. It pays very well. Start young. Remember, when you earn money in your life and you do well, make sure you start giving from the first day. Don't wait until you're successful to give tzedakah. Give from the first $10 you make. Give, give, give. It is the greatest investment you can make. If, if you had to ask me to pick a day when business difficulties turn in the right direction, is when we started to give tzedakah the right way from before the success turned. It's easy to give when you're successful. When things are difficult, and you know you have an obligation to give tzedakah, give early, give young, start young. It's the greatest piece of business advice I can give you. It's, it's greater than Harvard University's MBA program, I guarantee it. And there are parents. I go back to it all the time. You, you, you follow that path, and you can't go wrong. It will take you to places in life and in business, in your careers, whatever they may be, in, 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 in the businesses that we know, in teaching, whatever you do, you carry the Derek and it is the greatest thing that you can do for yourself. I wish you all great success in your endeavors and congratulations on this prestigious designation for honor roll at YBE. And again, thank you. I'm humbled to be here. You know, um, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I have to say something if you don't mind. Uh, you know, I, I've done I've done many you know honors programs and graduation programs. Uh, I've been doing this for a very long time, and um, I have to tell you that I know why you were here tonight because the way you spoke, the sincerity, the personalization of your life, and the advice that you gave to the students, and honestly to all of the adults in the room as well. They could really live by those words. And I know it was very heartfelt, and we appreciate your being here tonight and speaking to us. Each year, we induct individuals as honorary members of the Honor Society, whom the administration, faculty, and students feel exemplify the seven pillars of character, courage, honesty, humility, leadership, scholarship, and service that our own society is based upon. Those individuals do not know they have been selected until now. This year, two individuals have been selected to receive this honor. Each year, we recognize an outstanding member of the community or staff who serves as a role model and exemplifies all the qualities in our motto, in our honor society. It is my pleasure to induct as an honorary member of the YDE Honor Society Mr. Hyman Chira. Mr. Chira is a dynamic member of the business community who exemplifies the American dream and maintains Jewish tradition. Mr. Hyman Chira is a role model, not just for our own students, but for all students everywhere. 
He exemplifies all the pillars upon which the honest society is supported. Character, courage, honesty, humility, leadership, scholarship, and service. At this time, I'd like to call upon Mr. Heinshire to join me for the formal presentation. We would like to present to Mr. Chair this plaque. It says, having demonstrated outstanding character, humility, leadership, scholarship, and service, is hereby inducted as an honorary member of the YD Honor Society this 10th day of May, 2017. We also induct at this time a member of the faculty who the administration, staff, and students feel has done an outstanding job in helping to educate our students at YDE. This faculty member is someone who has given herself 24-7, has worked continuously since coming to YDE on behalf of the school, is always available for students, always goes that extra mile, always is willing, always willing to help at any time, whether it be a student, another teacher, or a staff member. At this time, I'd like to call upon Mrs. Tammy Walker to please come forward to receive her honorary. presented to Mrs. Tammy Walter, having demonstrated outstanding character, humility, leadership, scholarship, and service, is hereby inducted as an honorary member of the YDE Honor Society this 10th day of May, 2017. pleasure to call upon the new inductees to complete the requirements for admission. I will call upon each group of students to come forward to receive their awards, their certificates, and for those students who will be speaking, they will be speaking at this time. I'm going to start with the ninth grade principal's honor roll. I ask that each of the students in the ninth grade please stand. And I'm going to call your names. Please come forward. And I'm going to ask Dr. Goldberg, our associate principal, and Mr. Rabbi Muscat, our assistant principal, to help distribute the books and certificates. Yeah. Okay. Bobby Addis. Morris Kabia, oh sorry, Lisa Kabia. Jimmy Layla. Zoe 
The group representing Courage, Raymond Duchesne, Jakob Elias, Ronnie Kahan, Morris Indy, Akiva Gregorov, Soldier Rock. Please come forward.
company achieves something successful. Sorry, he achieves his goals for improving himself and not the world. He makes himself a better person for his own humanity, not for his reputation. So giving an example is something, is something that is not a lot of people do. It's something you see in him. Once you see, you get to know him. Zeb is quiet about his achievements, and I look up to my brother for him. I hope one day I'm able to emulate the trait that he has. My grandfather, though I'm not trying to be very humble, I never grows to love the promise me. Whenever he's not brand new school or learning, he always sits in the back, even when others ask him to sit in the front. One time he was praying in different school, and someone approached him and said, you're sitting in my seat. So I was thinking to myself, you know, I was going to go over to him and say, you know, he's a rabbi, and right away my grandfather, he got up and said, I'm sorry I'm sitting in your seat. And he, and, and, he, and he let him sit. He always goes to hear other rabbis speak and, stand down, and stands down when others ask him to speak. Even though he definitely, I don't know if he'll crash, get up and give over the When the word humility comes up in my mind, I think of my brother. I just want to make mention that for the boys who are coming up now, that, that so they can take individual pictures also later with the and they will be a lot of And also, again, uh, if there are parents in the audience and uh, other relatives, Thank you. 
of Cairo, Egypt. As chief rabbi of Cairo, he helped many of his community members escape the harshness of turmoil while he himself stayed longer than he should have until he finally passed away in 1974. He was a great role model to all of the Jewish people and he remains my inspiration until this day. What is honesty? Honesty means speaking the truth. However, it's not enough that one does not tell a lie. It is more than that. It is living a life, a life based off of moral virtue and high ethics. And my dad exemplifies this me doubt, both in the family and community. He told me that being honest will not only get you far in life with family and friends, but it will also make you a successful person. As we all know, that honesty is the best possible. Joseph Abraham, David Amram, David Basul, Ezra Bekar, Ariel Bensua, Isaac Vega, Gabriel Bilderici, and Martin Cohen. Someone who says direction and 
creating something new and exciting. This definition is unique to my father. He is my rock and inspiration who sets, who sets out direction for our family, for his community, and for his business. He motivates those around him and empowers them with care and compassion. Together with my mother, they have created a wonderful family who may live in Torah and Israel and continues to scholar and 
His living is so to be able to share my faith in the God of Israel. He is my inspiration. I hope to follow and enjoy the pursuit of Quran knowledge.